Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of PEF Rewind. Sean Woodland, Tommy Marquez, joined by four-time CrossFit Games athlete, Julie Fouché. Julie, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Thanks for doing this. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the 2012 Chipper, an event that you won back then, and go back to 2012 and just what do you remember about that season and about that lead up to the CrossFit Games? So crazy. That was more than 10 years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm, I know. Really having me rack my memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was it was an incredible season for me. I felt amazing going into those games and. Um, you know, even as we get to this workout or even the, the other workout, I'm pretty sure it was that year. Yeah. The Pendleton workout, mm-hmm. um, were two of my all time favorite workouts, workouts that I went back to mentally many times because I felt like I was in such a flow state during those workouts. So, um, it was a lot of definitely a lot of challenge leading up, leading into that season, it was uh, during, it was at the end of my first year of medical school, first time competing at the games, you know, after well being in medical school. And that was a very, one of the most difficult years of my life. But through that process really helped me to connect with my why for why I was competing. Mm-hmm. And once I made that connection, I was like, I, I felt like I was really in my element and I enjoyed training. I had the best time training leading into the games. I had a focused month off of school and I was just only focused on training. So I felt really good going into that competition. It's cool to hear you say that because, you know, this was your third season in a row at the games. In the first two years, you came onto the scene in a big way. You know, you finished fifth at your first year in 2010. Expectations start to build another fifth place in 2011. And I think, um, at least from the outside looking in, a a lot of people who are watching may not remember that time back in the day but there was almost like this thought of like all right when is julie going to make that jump to the podium it it wasn't Mm -hmm. a matter of if but it almost seemed like when um you know i think you were around 22 this year 22 23 uh maybe a little bit older i i can't remember off the top my 23 because it was what it was 11 years ago so yeah yeah 23 (laughs) yeah so 2023 starting med school Um, Mm -hmm. but, uh, it seemed like, all right, like she's someone that people were hoping and expecting to maybe push Annie and push for the top, top spot. And you come out firing in Pendleton. I mean, I think you will finish one, two in the two Pendleton events. Um, Um, I don't know if I finished second in the, in the obstacle course, that one, I, I, because of the way it was structured, it was one of those elimination structures. So I didn't make it to the final Mm -hmm heat. So I might've been like fifth, but, but yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that because for me, my whole journey in the CrossFit games was really a journey of my mental growth and a journey of me believing in myself. And like you mentioned that first year finishing fifth, I had no idea what to expect. And then I feel like we just lost them. Am I, are you guys still here? Yeah, we're still <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you're still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you threw me off with the video. Yeah. Um, but so I didn't know what to expect. And then the second year in 2011, it was a year of big transition for me. I had just started med school, just moved to Cleveland. I'd also been through a lot of personal um, stress, had, had experienced some loss of, of loved ones. And so I wasn't processing that well. And when I went into that 2011 games, I went in with the ma- mentality really of don't do worse than last year. And even though I went into the last event of that games in third place, and it was a great event for me. I completely botched it and ended up in fifth again. And so while it looks like, oh, she did well, she got fifth twice. For me, that felt like a real defeat because I felt like I could have been on the podium in that year. And so that, you know, that process continued. And even though in 2012, I did end up on the podium and it was my best finish ever in second, um, there were also many times where my my own expectations of myself, my lack of belief in myself that I was capable of winning, I think got in the way of me potentially um, winning or ever winning the games. Mm-hmm. My, the earliest memory I have of you, cause I kind of, I started getting involved in CrossFit in 2012, but I remember the uh, central East regional and there was a chipper. I think that like no one had finished up to that point. And I think you were the, one of the first to finish it. Do you remember that? And if so, like what, what stands out about, about that experience was, I love a good chipper. Yeah, right. <laughs> apparently. I've always, yeah, yeah. I've always done, I was cool that we're talking about this chipper because yes, there've been several chippers at regionals 
that I ended up doing very well in. The first one you might, I think the one you're probably thinking of is, was 2012. It was mm -hmm. a long barbell chipper. Um, and then we also had the one in 2014 that I think I ended up having the record on. And then in 2015, it was the chipper that got me with my Achilles. Yep. Yes. Oh, man. But, it, that was... but that one, I also had really high expectations of mm -hmm. finishing. So mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and, and, and like my, my, I guess my last question as a lead in before, before the, uh, we watch this test is coming into that Saturday night. Cause the chipper event at the games was the Saturday night in the, in the tennis stadium. And it almost felt like it was a big turnaround point for you because coming into that, you'd had the clean ladder right before. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think like a 27th outside the top 25 finish for you. And, you know, if we can, if we can look back on your career one of the things that i think was the mo was like hey when julie starts to get that top end strength that's going to really catapult her a little bit mm -hmm. so you were coming into this test that seeming you love chippers and you, it's something you're excited for but you're also coming off of maybe a less than ideal finish and you're in third place overall so i'm curious as you approach that and you come off a bad finish and you know you have something good in front of you where is your mm -hmm. mindset at it's a great question. And I think I had, am I right that it was the handstand push-up med ball? Was that Friday night? Yes. Yep. So that was my real big, I was, I think I was in first leading up to that event and I completely botched it. Mm -hmm. And so, and then having the clean ladder, which was not a strength, I was never great at the one rep strength events. And so, yeah, I actually, it's hard for me to even remember, remember <laughs> at that time, but I think I had worked a lot on you know, just trying to, to brush it off and not take the last event in to the next event with me. And so I knew, you know, I, I, you know, I really enjoyed chipper. Oh, interruption in the signal here. Well, we lost her for a second. That's okay. We'll get her back. We'll just do this until, uh, until she comes back. But we're going to, while we're doing that, this is it, while we're waiting oh, on Julie. She's back. She's back. All right. I'm on, back. I don't know what happened there. Sorry, Let's guys. bring her back. All good. No, I was going to uh, set up what the actual chipper was, unless you had more to say on that answer, because I don't want to cut you off. I don't know what you caught, but I was just saying, I was trying to go into it with probably a fresh blank slate and try to leave the last event behind me and go into each event, just focus on what was ahead. Cool. All right. We'll, hit, we'll get into it in one second, but we there's no... On this broadcast, we're going to show you. There's no commentary, and I don't <laughs> think there's any uh, event description. Oh, so this this is what it is. It's it's ten overhead squats at 105 pounds, mm -hmm. which sounds absurd now for women, but back then was super heavy. You know that was yeah. that's going to dose you up. A ten box jump overs at 20 inches, ten fat bar thrusters at 95 pounds, ten mm -hmm. power cleans at 125, ten toes to bar. And then this is the one that got the crowd all just 10 burpee muscle ups. And then you go back through 10 toes to bar, 10 power cleans, 10 fat bar thrusters, 10 box jump overs, 10 overhead squats. So, okay, let's, uh, let's get into this. Let me, let me call this up. All right. And we will do this. It's so cool. I haven't even thought about, you know, I am glad you just repeated the workout because I remembered some of the movements, but mm -hmm. I forgot about <laughs> I forgot All about right. the burpee muscle ups, honestly. Here we go. It, and it's funny, that's some foreshadowing because I think they, they are a very important part of this test in particular. The yeah. old the oh. old shield. Oh man, some memories come back Look seeing that. that shield. Look at those memories in, in uh old stadium in Carson. Mm -hmm. What was special about the tennis stadium? Because you know everyone always talks about how cool of a setting that was. Yeah. I think it was just so intimate. And I don't I didn't appreciate it until after I was done competing and I got to experience it as a fan, mm -hmm. but it really felt so intimate. Like you felt like you're so close to the competition. Um, as an athlete, you could just feel the community around you while you were competing. You know, it felt in some ways like you were just at your gym doing a workout, but then in some ways mm -hmm. you could feel so close to the fans. Camila Blanc Bazinet. And this is, so we've talked a lot about this just on, on other shows, but this is where you can kind of see seeds getting planted of how events and tests are going to get laid out moving forward. You know, this is the first time I think you ever started standing on plates or mm. having a starting yeah, mat. Or had, yeah, yeah, and a was, finish mat. Yeah, having to mm -hmm. finish on those plates. That's so true. Elizabeth Akinwali and, and Val Voberl. And you mentioned like the yeah. tennis stadium vibe. Like 
the what a lot of people remember fondly about the tennis stadium was still kind of being cultivated here, right? Like 2010, mm -hmm. it was a, a quick trip to the StubHub after originally thinking it was going to be in Aromas. First full year in 2011. This is when I think we started to put some of the marquee tests in Friday night, Saturday night with the med ball mm -hmm. handstand push up, like you mentioned. There you are. And then this one. And then uh, a 23 year old <laughs> Julie Fouché coming in in third place here. Um, and and it seemed like this was one of the events leading into 2013 that started to kind of build that tennis stadium lore. Annie. Annie, yeah. This is it, so cool. I, <laughs> is it tough for you to like watch your, your own workouts back? Um, I mean, I, I guess I don't do it very much. <laughs> <Can't tell you. laughs> it's, it's been a while. I don't, and even back then, I don't know if I really did I go back. I think I would go back and watch them afterwards. Um, not always. It's so different watching it versus experiencing the memory in your head. Mm -hmm. So we start with those. 10 overhead squats. So you're facing mm -hmm. Annie. So when you're in this situation where you're facing Annie, this around, was like, cool. It, you're, we were awkward? facing each other. <laughs> you like don't make eye contact or is Yeah, I think I, I was just focusing. I always was one to just focus on my own workout, uh -huh. but it was, I mean, definitely um, different having facing each other in that part of the workout. And that's the, the 10 box jump overs. Well, and, and okay. touching on chipper, chipper strategy, right? Like you're, we just saw the kind of the flow of athletes move to the box and you were actually mm -hmm. towards the back off that first movement. Like, mm -hmm. are, are you someone that notices the, the, the movement of the pack, if you will, or like you said, you try to focus on your own stuff, but I know that sometimes you can kind of tap into that for better or worse. It's a great question. I really probably to my detriment was always so focused on what I was doing. And I think I could have used the awareness of my competitors a little bit more to my advantage. Although in those situations, yeah, I had a general sense of where other people were at. Um, had, you, had you used the fat bar thruster or the fat bar before? Because I think this is the first time we programmed it in a workout at the games. I had. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, but I know we had one at my gym. So it was something I had exposure to and had practiced with. Kristen Clever. Oh, man. Early in the lead here. This, this would be, so you got done with the fat bar thruster. So now you're going to the, the 10 power cleans at 125. That's right. For me, that was heavy after I did my 190. Yeah. It was 190 a few hours before. Um, yeah, I remember that movement specifically and facing out and seeing the crowd. And 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 it, it's interesting the way this workout is programmed. The tens for a lot of these movements just seem like they would be almost nothing now. But right. um, it, it, with, with the 10 rep scheme kind of being pervasive throughout was there any like do you remember any strategy any like hey like always get half or singles or anything like that you know i don't really remember any strategy i think that the the power cleans were probably the only place where it was having to be broken up versus mm -hmm. everything else it seemed like you could just find a cadence and move through um so that's probably the only place it came into play and it's just crazy to think about i mean i wonder what times women would get on this workout today it would be pretty crazy to see this is another it. thing that always is crazy to me is that you look back on these old videos and barely anybody wore the hand the grips and now everyone mm -hmm. has it so yeah then, we have burpee muscle ups here yeah i never liked grips even i did gymnastics i wore grips and gymnastics but for some reason i just i tried them several times i never liked wearing them um i always felt like i was slipping and i liked being able to feel the Mm -hmm. bar the rings on my hands and this is interesting you saw annie and telena both uh jump up into a bent arm there wasn't an extension rule i don't think and they no. went from bent arm into the muscle up. Huh. but you you were i think were the only one of the only athletes to immediately go into a full kip um which and then yeah, i guess i was too short to just jump. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> maybe you and chris maybe you I and chris and clever too because i think chris uh, had to jump yeah. to these I was always, I always like to use my momentum as much as I could. <laughs> and there were, they're like, this is before risers or anything like that. It's like, here's the ring height you figure it out, right? I mean, I don't think. Right. Or I think there was something about it having to be at least a certain distance okay. above your hand or something. But we had, we could set them before, I believe. This is such, this is such a tedious movement. You know, like we've seen burpee muscle ups in, in the past. Like, I think they showed up at regionals the next year. Um, but. 
The, the, yeah, you can the see me like struggling on that one. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what number that is. And and the and this is also a, a, this brings back so many memories. This is before we. I, I don't even know if we had fully integrated like the hand up for judges. I don't think we had with the five. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's, mm -hmm. there's so many like things that haven't been developed yet for for the games that. I mean, you can even see with this live broadcast. There's no there's no graphics. There's there's no commentary on it. It's it's kind of crazy to see it in this almost like kind of raw form. I think on the broadcast we had graphics because mm -hmm. I remember that pretty pretty vividly. But yeah, there's just it is funny. Like there's things you would see change now. Like you'd probably you'd right. probably now do five muscle ups on one, then five on another. So this is where you uh, take the lead, yeah. right? This I yeah. think you were the first back to the toes bar. And so it must have been the muscle ups that got me mm -hmm. ahead. Yeah. Yep. And and uh, when you turned around, there was a little bit of a pop with you, from the crowd. Can you hear that? Do you remember, like, if you were ever in the lead or take, took a lead, do you ever remember mm -hmm. hearing or feeling that that momentum shift? I do remember. Almost on, it's like this, like, almost on a subconscious level. But, yeah, I do remember that. And I do remember knowing, okay, I'm in the lead. Mm -hmm. And especially, like, when um, you separate here, like, it, when you're the first to leave the mm -hmm. rig, it's very clear you're in first. As mm -hmm. you're walk, even walking to the bar, or, can you at least know from your peripheral that you're there? Yeah, I think so. And actually, this is cool to watch because this, I think this is probably the movement or the moment that I go, when I was going back and visualizing this in later years of like, okay, I felt like I was in a flow state is I remember this movement because I remember feeling like I was in first and I remember seeing the crowd and just feeling like I was in my element at that point. For you, when you say flow state, because you hear that from a lot from athletes, like what exactly does that mean to you? I think to me, it, it sort of means or it means like almost an out of body experience where you mm -hmm. just feel like, like it wasn't like a normal workout and training where you feel like you're everything is dying and all your, yeah. all your muscles are hurting and failing. Like it just feels like you're doing what you're meant to be doing and you're not thinking, you're not in your head. You're just executing. There's a 15 minute time cap on this and they were cutting too. So only 24 athletes advanced after this one. So for just, People are wondering how long cuts have been uh, around. Yeah. And it's interesting because this was both back before we seated athletes and placed them in the mm -hmm. middle, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you were very close still yeah. to the woman that you were chasing right there. So, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a subconscious boost at all, but when you can, even on the box here, you have a, a clear view at who's chasing you and who you're chasing yeah. on the leaderboard. And I, I imagine that's a pretty nice benefit. Yeah, I think so. And this was a big moment for me too. Now, as I'm connecting the dots, it was in, I think it was in 2011 when we had this, the sled, um, double under handstand mm -hmm. workout. And in that workout, it was me and Annie and I was winning going into the final stretch. And for some reason I had pushed the sled the entire length of the floor, the first two rounds. But for some reason in the third round, I just like stopped halfway to shake out my arms and then Annie passed me and then I finished. And I think that at that time it was because I really couldn't believe that I was in front of Annie Thor's daughter. <laughs> and so right now, I think this is a really big moment for me because I knew I was ahead and I knew Annie was right there, but I was really believing in myself and not like subconsciously feeling like I needed to take a break or, or that I shouldn't be ahead of Annie because she was the champion and I, there it you know, is. I finished. 743 yeah. was your time on that. And, and like you mentioned that moment of like believing and holding on, right? Like with yeah. overhead squats being the final movement, that's a costly movement if you let go, right? Like one to two reps away, you drop it the bar. Is. That's a huge gap. It takes a long time to get it back into position. And you know how fickle they are. So it was like almost poetic that you had that movement to be yeah. able to hold on to at the end. It is. Um, and I always liked overhead squats, but it is one that you can, if you get in your head a little bit and you get off balance, you can lose it. Um, and, and I, it makes me think about 2014 too, that final workout there that I had to, I had to really perform in that to get on the podium in 2014. And we had those heavy overhead squats and broke climbs mm -hmm. and I dropped one, um, and thought like, oh my gosh, I totally blew it, but ended up being able to make it up. Mm -hmm. and, and it's pretty cool in this moment, right? The, the two women that finished behind you are the the reigning fittest and second fittest woman on earth. And you go out there and you go toe to toe with both of them 
and you beat them both to the finish line. I, I, I imagine what's that feeling like standing on the mat and getting that moment of, of jubilation and celebration as you, you know, beat the best in the world. I think that is a moment. It is one of, one of the most, um, memorable moments, I think of my competition career at the CrossFit games. I remember standing on that mat. I remember putting my arms in the air and just feeling so proud of myself. And it was such a, um, a good feeling, especially after having a couple of tough events before that with the handstand push up the night before and then the the clean and so yeah it's it's a moment i will i will not forget it was i think one of the more defining moments of my personally for me of my career it's helena fortunato that was her rookie yeah. year yeah. of the games yeah and and i know you try not to at least on the bad side of things let uh you know the previous workout impact the next but were you able to allow a good performance to maybe carry over in some sort of momentum fashion for you i think so yeah yeah you use that it creates i think it creates a lot of momentum and excitement and um builds your confidence going into the next workout becca voigt is that becky konzelman down there becky konzelman yeah. Like Eli yeah elizabeth akinwali wow. i remember i think christy adkins is in this heat too yes yeah, so she, she was seven we were all we were all cheering for her and I remember I have a cool picture at the end of this workout. I think right after Christy finished, a bunch of the girls gathered around, like hugging and high fiving. And that was such a cool moment for me, too, of just the camaraderie that happens. Angie Pie? Yeah, or Angie Hay yeah. now, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is all coming back to me now. <laughs> what was wow. So, what was it like with that group? Because, you know, you spent a lot of time just before oh my gosh. Uh, during competitions, but yeah. it, not a lot of people got to see these this crew compete together but what was it like just being around that many talented individuals it was so much fun we always had a blast and even though yeah the competition was and i especially i was one to like stay in my zone during competition but i think especially this year because it kicked off with pendleton which was such a new experience for so many of us mm -hmm. and it almost threw us through this loop of like oh my gosh can we just even get through it yeah. and it created a lot of camaraderie out there on the trail and um, i remember some that's that is one, definitely my favorite workout mm -hmm. of all time across the games was pendleton but it created yeah. a lot of camaraderie and i mm -hmm. i have so many um great memories of running that course with christy of Angie Pye or Hayes being hilarious afterwards, her and Annie Sakamoto just talking about the funniest <laughs> things that happened along, like mm -hmm. when we were all sitting around afterwards, it just, it was such a, um, it was such a cool, cool experience to be um, part of it with all these women. And I don't want to take anything away from Christy Atkins here, but this is 105 pounds now. And this is when the sport was very much in its infancy. Like it just goes to show you like how much things have advanced. You know, well, totally. and and look at look at how she had to run yeah. out all the way back to her yes. lane. Like yeah. barbell so close, she <laughs> threw she threw her barbell across the floor, and then they let her just pick it up where it landed, and then come back all the way across the floor to her lane. Like it's just it's stuff that would never happen today. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she was one of my closest friends among this group. We trained together during my first summer before 2010 games, and. We always kept in close touch. She was she started before me. Her I think her first year was two thousand nine. So I always looked up to her. Did she? Did she? Was she under the hyperfit banner for a little bit? We got replay. No. Nope. Oh no. Nope. Um, she was always with Melody Feldman. Um, yeah. 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 And so I I would sometimes get together with her for workouts. I'm not gonna lie. It, it made me it made me nervous watching you do those burpee uh, those uh, those box jump overs. Just seeing you rebound them back <laughs> yeah. in the day and, just... and knowing what's to come, it was yeah. a little, it hurt me a little bit. Totally a little foreshadowing. Yeah. No, I always loved box jumps. Um, so yeah, I didn't. I always loved them. I did rebounding. I I loved fight God bad, but mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that happened. was when you could rebound off the top too. People were jumping yes. off the top as well, yes. but yeah, you and Annie, you were actually you were way out front at this point. I think I think you had like seven or eight reps in before Annie even started, and then it was that was it. Yes, and you're like, don't let go of that bar. <laughs> had you won an event prior to 20? Oh, yep, you won the beach. My apologies, I, I answered my own question. I was going to say, you if go. you remember, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. that's good stats. Yeah. <laughs> All right.
Well, there we yeah, go. Yeah, the, the long beach running triathlon workouts and the chippers, those are my thing. And, and so this kind of kick-started a, a, a nice run to the finish line for you. I, I think after that, I don't, you didn't finish outside of the top 10, and you had a couple strong finishes the weekend. And not only did you make the podium, but you actually jumped up from third into second overall. And um, I don't want to say fulfilled your destiny, if you will, <laughs> just, but, but it just seemed like, okay, this is where Julie is, is meant to be. And um, you mentioned that this was a great moment in your, in your career, but um, a- after that chipper, did it feel like you were in that state and ready to, to make that leap? Yeah, it did. I think I really was, it was so much of a mental shift for me. It really was about believing myself, believing that I deserved to be there um, and having confidence in myself. And I think that was a big moment for me um, that ultimately led me to, to be able to finish on the podium. What does fitness look like for you now? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> um, I, it looks like fitness. It's not competition. I, I do a lot of garage gym workouts. I do my best to make it to an affiliate a couple times a week because, you know, everything's better when you're in an affiliate. Mm-hmm. It's so much better workout, better people. You just feel good when you leave. So um, I do that, but it's, it's, you know, the, the workouts I do nowadays were my war, were like my warm ups back in the day. So it's very <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even just seeing, you know, a, a past version of yourself on, on the competition floor, does it stir up any memories or feelings that you're just like, oh, I didn't even, I, I, I'd almost maybe put that away and, and close that box. A little bit. Yeah, I have, I have very much closed that box. Um, you know, people ask me, you know, are you going to do masters? Are you going to come back? And I just have no real desire because I think there's so much, so many yeah. other things I'm so passionate about doing in life now. And, and to be an athlete that's serious about going to the games, it it is such a commitment in every area of life. Um, and so I have very much closed that box, and I have such a appreciation and gratitude for that time period um, and the opportunities that have come from it. And I wouldn't change a thing. And I learned and grew from it in so many ways that are you know I'm still learning and growing, but. Um, but no, it's not like it doesn't stir up like, oh, man, I wish I was back out there. It's just this really deep appreciation and gratitude for that experience. What do you miss most about it, if anything? Yeah, I think the thing I miss most is just knowing that you are the fittest you've ever been and mm-hmm. feeling that feeling of walking into the competition, knowing you are as prepared as you could be, that you've put in the work, that you've, you know, you've done the big things and the little things day in and day out and you're ready that's such a cool feeling to have hmm. so okay uh, go for no, it. i was just say what well, other than other than fitness you, you mentioned so many other things that you have uh, that you want to focus on right now what are the things that you are the most focused on in your life right now sure i well i am seeing patients now so back then i was right. my first year of med school and 11 years later i'm finally a doctor no i've, I've been <laughs> a doctor for a few years but but i i see patients right now i work for a precision medicine company called wild health who was a sponsor of the 2023 mm-hmm. games so you all may have heard the name but i really have enjoyed my work with patients and a lot of patients who are doing crossfit and it's cool to be able to connect over that and and just have real relationships and help um, help people use all the data that we have now at our fingertips in the world we live in today to help improve our health and our fitness. So that's been very rewarding. Um, and then I still have my podcast, Pursuing Health. So mm-hmm. I started that in 2015, sort of as I finished my competition career, that was my way to stay in touch with the CrossFit community. And I really enjoyed doing that. Um, and so I'm still doing that. And then... Um, a lot of my own really like personal growth, I've really dove into more of the um, sort of emotional, spiritual side of healing and health. And so it's been personal growth. It's been learning how to help my patients with those areas as well. And I think so much of what makes CrossFit so powerful is that side, like the fact that mm-hmm. the community that we have, what happens in the affiliates, it is far beyond just impacting people on a physical level it is so much deeper than that and so you know continuing to learn and grow in that area has been really cool for me too and um you know i love i have a great relationship i have a we have a 16 year old um, boy from tanzania who 
um, my significant other is adopted. And so we spend a lot of time. He just did his first 300 pound deadlift, which is super cool. Wow. Is playing soccer. So it's been really cool to be part of his life and watch him grow as well. That's awesome. Uh, I was going to say with that kind of that mind, that in mind, sorry, I got to uh, wrap up because I have to take a child to the bathroom. Yep. So I'll be right back if you guys are still on. So you can, okay. His, uh, his son is doing the bathroom dance, but, uh, oh boy. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. <laughs> But with, with that in mind, you know, talking about both your, you know, working with patients and the own like spiritual, emotional, uh, growth that, uh, that you have been on. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you gleaned or learned from your competition days that you then carry over into those areas at all? Or is it simply like, Hey, that was an awesome experience. I look at it fondly. And then now I'm just this entirely different person. Oh no, 100%. I think everything that we learn in life and everything we experience, it just rolls into the next, you know, our, our evolution. And so, you know, I think there are a lot of things that I learned that I wish I would have learned earlier that would have probably helped me in my competition days. I think in that time in life, I was so focused on just the achievements. I was so focused on, you know, getting good grades in school and becoming a doctor and doing well at the CrossFit games and training. And um, in many ways, I think that came from actually a place of insecurity and mm. a place of, you know, from when I, from really not feeling good enough. And that was my way of of having significance. And so now I think I've developed a much more, a deeper sense of who I am and confidence in who I am, where I still want to do great things in the world and like even more so, but it comes from a much more um, fulfilled place instead of more of, I would say like an insecure, fearful place. And I think that's also what got in the way. And what a lot of my learning was in my cross games career was so much of the mental side of competition um, which really is what it's all about. I mean, the physical is important. I think it takes a certain amount of natural physical gifts and it takes a certain amount of training. Um, but then there are a lot of people who have those things but don't have the mentality to put it together. And that was always my my biggest area for growth. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it, it's, it seems pretty self-evident that like a, a better sense of confidence in who you are and sense of self would improve, you know, your performance as an athlete, but you know, what have been the, the major breakthroughs in, in terms of hel it helping just you flourish as a human being? Totally. Yeah. I think, well, I think what you see with athletes too, is that, is that being an athlete or being a CrossFit games athlete can become your identity. Mm. Um, and I was lucky that I had, at least I had, you know, medicine was another fast of my life, but without that, you know, I think so many of us who are so passionate about CrossFit, we can, that can become everything to us. It's everything that we do. And so for me developing, um, you know, developing more myself outside of that, developing really like relationships were something that I didn't invest a lot of time and energy into. Like I had relationships, I had friends, I had family, but it wasn't to the same degree. Um, I was, I was often prioritizing the, you know, training or school or things like that over relationships. So spending a lot of time building those. And I think I've, I've now trailed off from what your original question was. And so oh, no, <laughs> totally. I really, I think I answered it, but what was it? No, it was, it was definitely, about, it was about like the benefits and moment breakthroughs for you in flourishing as a person. Uh, yes. So you're definitely on, uh, yeah. I totally, yeah. totally. Yes. And, um, and everything, I think that, you know, when, when you're trying to achieve something, so many times we are our own worst critic, right? Like whether you're competing at the CrossFit Games or you're trying to beat your fan time, we are really hard on ourselves in our heads, right? And we can be very negative and get very down on ourselves. And I was certainly that way. Mm. And um, I've really worked on that and learned to have more compassion with myself and find that not only is it much more pleasant, um, day to day, but also <laughs> I typically have better results that way. It's not like, I think there's this fear that if you're not hard on yourself, you're not going to do as well, but I can attest that that is certainly not the case. And, and the last question that I have, and I don't know if, if John's got, <laughs> got one more after. Yeah, I didn't expect to be making it. I, I mean, like, they, yeah, breakthroughs or insights uh, from no. the bathroom. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> my, I mean, I guess my last question now, kind of wrapping it back to this event when, uh, now that we've, we've watched through it, kind of relived it a little bit and. We know that in the end, that was an it was an event win. It, you finished second on the podium. Uh, what really stands out to you about 2012, that event now that you've had some time to reflect a little bit? That particular event or 2012 in general? Both. 
Hmm. I think for me, 2012 was a lot about overcoming and finding my why in competing as a CrossFit Games athlete. So that event really exemplifies that. I think that as much as I did feel like I was in a flow state, I felt like, wow, you know, this is really something I was made to do. And I, and I, I think I spent a, a lot of the year trying to figure that out and, and in my mind, identifying with why I was training and why I was putting myself in such, you know, holding myself to such a high bar. And then having that event where I really felt it, I think it really hit home for me and, and ended up, you know, that year ended up being my best finish ever. And I don't think that was an accident. I think it was because of, um, you know, because of some of those breakthroughs that I had. Julie, thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're super busy. Um, what, anything big you got coming up that you want to let people know about? Um, nothing, nothing too big or crazy. No, right. <laughs> just the usual. Pursuing health. Yeah. That is the, that's the podcast. That's right. Right? Okay. Check out Pursuing Health. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was great to see you.